Hi guys! So today we're going to talk about Lauren Spirer. Hey guys, Victoria Paxton here. Thanks for stopping back by my YouTube channel. It's been a while, you guys. It's been a while. But I'm back. Not 100%. We're moving forward. Okay. This is kind of a long one, so sit back, relax, and like, share, subscribe, and all that other garbage. It's free. All right, you guys. So I'm probably mispronouncing her last name. Sue me. I I'm trying here, you guys, but I get so tired of the little snarky comments. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So Lauren Spirer was born in January of 91 to Charlene and Robert Spirer. Her father was an accountant. She grew up in Scarsdale, New York, which is an affluent town in Lower Westchester County. I think we've all heard of Scarsdale, probably. Lauren graduated from Edgemont, Edgemont High School in 2009 and enrolled at IU, Indiana University, yay, where she was studying textiles merchandising. She was active in the Jewish community at IU and had spent the previous spring break planting trees in Israel on behalf of the Jewish National Fund. That's awesome. I'd love to see young women and young men like doing something for the earth you know that's really cool to see you know a lot of people talk to talk but they don't walk the walk right spire met her boyfriend jesse wolf and her friend jay rosenbaum years earlier at camp tawanda tawanda tell me in the comments if you know what movie that's from uh it was a summer camp in the mountain town of honesdale pennsylvania it was there that she also met various other future IU students who later became her circle of friends when she enrolled there in 2009. On the, wait, duh. <laughs> on the night Lauren disappeared, she was drinking with several friends. Wolf stated that he didn't go out with Spire and her friends that evening. He did text back and forth with her, though, before he went to bed. According to witnesses, Lauren was very intoxicated. And let me stress they said she was extremely intoxicated. Bloomington police used video surveillance footage and witness statements to create a timeline of Spire's whereabouts before her disappearance. Okay, so here it goes, guys. Ready? Sit back. Friday, June 3rd, 2011, at 12.30 a.m., witnesses report that Spire left her apartment with a friend named David Ron. The pair went to Jay Rosenbaum's apartment, and she met up with Corey Rossman, who was Rosenbaum's neighbor. It gets kind of confusing, you guys, with this person and that person. It, it's kind of confusing, so just, you'll see. 1.46 a.m., she's seen entering Kilroy's Sports Bar. 2.27 a.m., she's seen exiting the bar with Rossman. She left her cell phone and shoes at the bar. She had taken off her shoes when she walked out. They had, like, a patio out back with sand, so she had taken her shoes off for that. Um... So Rossman walks with her to her apartment complex. Okay, three minutes later, 2.30 a.m. She's seen entering Smallwood Plaza Apartments, where that's her, where her residence is. A passerby named Zach Oaks noticed her level of inebriation and asked her if she was okay. You know it's bad when some random person asks, right? 2.48 a.m. After she left the apartment, she entered an alley that runs between College Avenue and Morton Street. Security cameras mounted on nearby apartments show her exit the alley at 2.51 a.m. and walk towards an empty lot. Her keys and purse were found along this route through the alley. Okay, so Lauren and Rossman arrived at Rossman's apartment shortly afterwards. Michael Beth, here we go with another person, Michael Beth, Rothman's roommate, was at the apartment. Rossman, Rothman himself was very intoxicated and stumbling. He vomited on the carpet on the way upstairs. Beth stated that he escorted Rossman to bed. He then tried to convince Lauren to spend the night for her own safety. He claimed Lauren said she wanted to return to her apartment. I don't care how bad she said she wanted to return to her apartment. She's a young woman. She's completely inebriated. I would be like, no, you're not going anywhere. I mean, what's she going to do? You know, I would just put my put a chair in front of the door and sit there and say, no, you need to go lay down. Like, you know, 3.30 a.m. Beth said he then phoned his neighbor, um, Rosenbaum, wanting him to take care of Lauren. 
Beth said that Lauren was attempting to get him to drink with, with her at her apartment. She eventually went to Rosenbaum's apartment where he observed a bruise under her eye, which was presumably sustained from a fall she had taken earlier in the evening, but she told him she didn't know where it came from. So she must have not remembered falling, right? Two calls were placed from Rosenbaum's phone shortly before she is reported to have left. Rosenbaum said Lauren placed both calls, one to Roan and one to another friend. Neither friend picked up and no messages were left. 4.30 a.m. Rosenbaum reports that Lauren left the apartment. This is the last reported sighting of her. He reported last seeing her at the intersection of 11th Street and College Avenue headed south on college. She was last seen barefoot wearing black leggings and a white shirt. Look, it's not this guy Rosenbaum's fault, but I just, you know, you always wonder like, what if? And I'm sure he thinks that all the time too, but I would have never let her go. I, but I'm a female. Maybe that's different. Maybe guy, I don't know. So several hours later that morning, he sent Spire, oh, I'm sorry, Wolf, who is Lauren's boyfriend, um, sent her a text and he received a reply from an employee at the bar. So obviously she'd left her phone at the bar and the employee found it. So Wolf then reported her missing. August of 2011, police conducted a nine-day search of the Sycamore Ridge landfill in Pimento, which is just south of Terre Haute. Terre Haute, for clues into her disappearance. Okay, so this landfill is where the trash from Bloomington goes, okay? Um, so the Bloomington Police Department, Indiana University Police Department, and the FBI took part in the search. As of May 24th, 2013, investigators had received 3,060 tips on Lauren's disappearance. A hundred of them received during the first half of 2013. On January 28th, 2016, the FBI conducted a raid of a home in Martinsville, which is about 20 miles north of Bloomington. The raid was connected to a man suspected of exposing himself to numerous women. The FBI and the other police agencies converged on the home with Bloomington police confirming they were involved in the search. Investigators sifted dirt removed from a barn near the property after cadaver dogs finished their work. The searches would, searchers would not discuss whether anything significant was found. Investigators towed a white truck in the property. The truck may have been connected to 35-year-old Justin Wagers, who lived there with his mother and stepfather. Okay, so Lauren's family has suspicions um, that some of the men surrounding her, like in that friends group or whatever that saw her that night, um, that they had something to do with her disappearance because they all refused to take a polygraph, which why would you refuse to take a polygraph if you're innocent and you didn't do anything wrong? Okay, so I tried to connect with Lauren. I was not able to connect with her. I'm not sure why. Um, but I, I was having like some visions and seeing some things, okay? So I was like feeling extremely nauseated and just my head was just pounding and spinning um, and a lot of times I'll feel what um, what the victim feels so it did actually honestly it felt like uh, there was one point in time when I got extremely intoxicated when I was younger and it was like everything was spinning and I felt like I was okay, but yet I knew I wasn't okay because I, you know, struggling, right? Um, yeah, I, then I was seeing like bursts of, I, I, I don't know how to really explain it, but like bursts of, like I could see, I don't know how to explain this, but it, it's like all of a sudden I could see like see her and then I couldn't see her and then I could see her. It was like little bursts. Um, I'm not sure why that is. Um, yeah. Okay. Here's the other thing that I was getting. So you know how a lot of times like in gangster movies or movies, you know, where they're like um, interviewing a, 
a suspect, say. And then, you know, they'll they'll take the suspect and they'll put their head down in the water till they're like struggling and fighting and they can't breathe and they bring them back up and let them get another breath and they put them back down. That's what I was feeling. Um, I was feeling like that was happening to her. Um, yeah, I, I was definitely, definitely getting that. Um, here's the other thing. So uh, I remember earlier, I just, okay, so you guys know the way I do this. I connect and then I do the research. Okay, but earlier when I was talking about uh, the landfill, that they searched the landfill, I was seeing that. I was actually seeing that in these visions. I was seeing um, a landfill. And so I really do feel like she's at the landfill. I mean, yeah, I feel like she's at the landfill. I do. Um, okay, so here's the other thing. Um, <clears throat> I was, I was seeing another thing that was kind of strange. So I was seeing her in this bar and I was seeing like bursts. That's the word burst, like burst, like a flash of her um, in this bar. And so I'm assuming, you know, it's the bar that she was drinking in that night. Well, then I'm also seeing uh, like, so if she's sitting where I am, like facing this way over this way, I'm seeing a man sitting here. And for some reason, if she's facing this way, he's facing like this way. So I don't know the setup of the bar, um, but he's definitely facing this way, okay? So while I'm seeing these bursts of her, I'm seeing him and he's like watching her, okay? So I know the, the, um, Friends, the guys that were around her refused to take a polygraph, right? Which is so screwed up. If you didn't do it, take the damn test. Like, it, I don't get it. So, here was the strange thing. I do feel like one of these people in particular was involved in her murder. I'm not going to say which one. Um... But I do feel like one of them was involved. Okay, but here's the scary part. I feel like this other guy that I'm seeing, like, watching her, I feel that he's involved too. And I don't know if it was just, you know, like in... Uh, like a situation arose and this guy's in the bar and he sees her and she's clearly intoxicated... And one of the guys with her, you know, one of her friends, supposed friends, who needs friends like that? Maybe they got together and did it together. But I don't feel like the friend knew the other guy. Um, I could be wrong about that. So I don't know. Maybe it was just opportunity. I don't know. And when I say this guy that her friend is involved, it doesn't necessarily mean he's the one that, like, you know, strangled her or shot her, which... She didn't get shot, but he's not the one that finished her off, but I feel like he was involved in it. Um, he definitely took some part in it. I don't know. I wish I could see more. I wish I could get more. But he definitely, yeah, he definitely took a part in it and was definitely involved. Um, the other thing is the guy who's like looking at or watching her, right? like he's done this before okay not so much that he's murdered a girl necessarily but that oh maybe he has actually um I just feel like he's done this before so maybe he's raped a woman before I don't know if it's gotten to murder I'm not 100% on that so I don't want to speak on that but um yeah it He's definitely done this before. Like, and I, when I say done this, like, I really think he's been like in a bar and he's gotten a woman and he's harmed her. And here's the even stranger thing. I feel like it's the same bar. I know. I don't know. All right, you guys. Be nice. Be kind. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Um, getting over 
this uh, uh, illness myself. Thank goodness it wasn't COVID. I'm very grateful it was not COVID. <laughs> um, but I'm back, and I hope everybody's doing well. And yeah, that does it for me. Bye, guys.